Hey y'all, welcome back to Bible Treasures and Reviews with Beth. So this video today is going to kind of um, start out with a little bit of just saying, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm okay, but I do need continued prayer for my loved one. Um, I keep this, my family side, uh, private from YouTube. There are just a few people who know exactly what's going on, those that are close to me, and um, something that I trust with, um, you know, just talking to them about particular prayer needs specifically. But um, just want to let you know that my husband is ill. I don't want to get into the specifics of what is happening with my husband, but he needs healing. So I have been intentionally just staying beside him, taking care of him, just sitting by him, holding his hand, um, hugging him, loving on him. And um, all of our family has just come beside my husband and we're just trying to um, walk this path. Um, lots of hospital stays, uh, doctor's appointments, but I just need my husband to be healed. So tomorrow is Thanksgiving and I am on here because not today, Satan. I am not letting him hold me back from coming on here and just talking to you guys a little bit. First of all, I want to say, I'm not sure what time of year you're going to be watching this, but if it's tomorrow and it's Thanksgiving of 2023, then I just want to wish you a special blessing to you and your family. And, um, you know, and I also just want to say that I realize that the holidays are a very, very difficult time for some people because of toxic family. You're going to be around people that know how to press your buttons. You're going to be around people who might reject you because you are a believer and you love the Lord Jesus Christ. But shine for Jesus. Don't speak words that could bring anything harsh. Don't speak words to toxic family members that could cause something to, to come up that might ruin your day. All you need to do is be present and just let the Holy Spirit shine through you. So uh, I just pray that tomorrow is a blessing to you and a blessing to others as the lost look at you and see something different. And could that something different be not getting involved in conversations that are unnecessary, not getting involved in things that could cause a heated conversation as you're coming together with family into your home that could be toxic. Shine for Jesus and let the Holy Spirit work through you. So, you know, we have been working with um, Sermon on the Mount, and I am going to get back into doing this, but I put a lot of time and study into this. Even though I have gone ahead and finished my book, there's still a lot of background things that I do um, to make this uh, a video session for you. So I haven't been able to sit down and really focus on this, uh, but I, it's coming back. I promise you it's coming back. But I also want to say that when I did the last video session, which is, hang on one second, it was for Matthew chapter 6. Well, I can't find it in my book quick enough. Uh, I'm not going to be editing this, so this is just going to be completely live. In fact, maybe I should have done this as a Facebook live. But um, anyway, we had done a study on Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34, which it's about Jesus teaching about worry. I had no idea what was going to hit us the next week. So I have taken this book and I have actually played my video that I did, which I'll post right here, the last one that I did about worry as we're studying Sermon on the Mount, uh, which by the way, anything I mentioned today will be listed in the description box below. If you click on those things, it really helps me to be able to get other books and studies and Bibles to come on here to teach you guys with or to share with you. So if you would shop those links, it really means a lot to me. I've been trying to get approved for an Amazon storefront, but unfortunately, that depends on how many people you have subscribed to your channel. And anyway, I haven't been approved yet. So if you haven't subscribed already, would you mind helping me out by doing that? It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, just a matter of hitting that button and, you know, making it so that the bell 
is tapped so that you receive notifications as things are uploaded. And even in the description box below, the things that you can get on Amazon, they're of no extra cost to you. It's just different links that you can go to to get some of the things that I use. There's lots of good stuff in there for Bible study. But as I have gone back and listened to the video session that I did, I mean, I have cried every time I've listened to it because now I am having to practice what I preach. Now, I ain't saying preach because I'm a preacher. I am not a preacher. I am just a student of the Word. And you know, anyway, I just love the Lord and I want to share Him with you. But I have really just sat down, sometimes just closed my eyes and just listened to what I taught. And I'm not saying that from a standpoint of, oh, that's how good it was. No, I am not saying that at all. Not at all. But if I could go back to... It's almost like going back to your younger self to tell you something. It's almost like I'm going to my older self to tell me something. Does that make sense? So um, I'm really having to focus on those scriptures and what I taught when I did that lesson on here. So that's a little bit of an update. And I just am asking you, please, please, please pray for my husband that the Lord Jesus heals him. Okay, so let me show you what I have in my Bible basket. I love this basket. Um, there is even a version of this that I bought for my niece uh, for her baby. And it's a, um, oh, what do you call it? Well, it's a baby diaper caddy. And it, it's made by this same company. And, oh, I just love it. So anyway, it's so soft. But I want to show you some of the things that I have in here. And I keep this by my couch in my living room and um let's just go through here and let's see what I, ha I have all right so my church gives these out so this is open windows this is by lifeway and uh, this is winter 2023-24 and these are it's a guide for personal devotions and it's from lifeway.com and our church keeps these in a basket and it's just a daily devotional that you can come in here and read it has on here um the different scriptures that you can read for the day and then you've got your devotion so you also have a bible reading plan so you see the read through the bible so that's in my basket oh i love this okay and this is in my description box below guys you have got to check this out so this is called sparkling gems from the greek it's 365 word studies for every day of the year to sharpen your understanding of God's Word, and it's by Rick Renner. So this particular book, okay, so I'll tell you what, will you stay with me and I'll read you what today's is? So let me open this up. Today is the 23rd of November. Is that right? 23rd of November? Okay. That's today's date because it in Thanksgiving on the 20th. Y'all, my mind, my goodness, just deal with me. Okay, well, we're saying today's November 23rd. <laughs> okay, so it says, oh, if you're financially blessed, don't feel get, get boop, don't feel guilty about it. All right, well, that is something that is a challenge for my uh, husband and myself because he had a major major job situation happen um, several years ago and I mean we really have not recovered from that so things are kind of hard for us but maybe this is for you if you are a listener and you are financially blessed okay so it says if you're financially blessed don't feel guilty about it so first Timothy 6 17 charge them that are rich in this world that they not that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Many years ago, my wife and I knew a family who was extremely wealthy. When I use the word extremely to describe their wealth, even this word inadequately expresses the immense reserves of worldly possessions they had accumulated. Due to their great-great-grandfather's wise planning two generations earlier, their family money had been invested in such a way that it couldn't be touched and therefore wouldn't be spent. As a result, the family investments had kept growing and accumulating for two generations. 
Although vast sums of money were in the bank and belonged to these family members, they were not allowed to touch one cent of it until the date that had been set by their great-grandfather. They were enormously wealthy, yet they struggled financially to make ends meet because the treasure they had in the bank wasn't at their disposal. When we first came to know this family, the time had finally arrived. Their money became available for them to use and enjoy, but because they had lived for so long with so little, they didn't know how to enjoy the money. In fact, even though they could purchase anything they wished, they didn't. They felt guilty about owning such money. So instead of enjoying their wealth, these family members just let the money sit in the bank when it continued to grow, where it continued to grow larger. Meanwhile, they lived like people who were financially strapped for cash. They wore old clothes, they balked at spending money to purchase a new car, and they were very concerned about what people would think of them if word ever got out about how much money they had in the bank. When I saw these people, I tried to encourage them to go buy some new clothes, but they didn't want to spend the money to do it. Even though they could purchase anything they wanted, they lived like poor people. And you know what? Talking about poor people, <laughs> do you see this? This book is torn away from the spine. That looks like I'm living like a poor person. <laughs> but it's okay. Like I said, I'm just keeping it real. So you're going to see that this book is torn up. Okay. When Paul wrote to Timothy, he gave him instructions for the rich people who attended his church. He said, charge them that are rich in this world, that they not be high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. 1 Timothy 6.17 I want you to notice that God's blessings are to be enjoyed. The word enjoy in this verse is from the Greek word. I am not going to pronounce it. Oh boy, is it? Well, maybe I will. Apollosis, it's A-P-O-L-A-U-S-I-S. -S. And again, I'm not going to be editing this video, so I will not be posting that word where I usually put word spellings down here. But it describes a person who gets the maximum benefit from something he owns. Rather than feel guilty about what he owns, he deserves great pleasure, gratisfaction, Gratifi I can't even talk, gratification and enjoyment from what he possesses. This means if God has entrusted abundant resources to you, you shouldn't feel guilty about your wealth or feel badly about enjoying it. God wants you to enjoy the blessings and resources he has entrusted to you. Paul asked the Corinthians, Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? That's 1 Corinthians 9, 7. Now, the only thing about this book, I am not a KJV person. I'm not saying that that's not a good translation. That's fine. It's just difficult for me to understand. So this is coming from a KJV translation. In other words, if you have worked hard to produce the success you are now experiencing, it is right and normal for you to personally enjoy a part of it. Worldly wealth empowers you to get things done. It enables you to be a blessing to other people, and it gives you the ability to sow into the work and advancement of the gospel. So stop feeling guilty if you are financially blessed. Stop feeling like it's wrong that you get a promotion when someone else didn't. You have worked hard for the harvest you are now reaping, and it's time to start enjoying what God has done for you. Why don't you change the way you are thinking? Learn to see yourself as one who has been specially, specially empowered to order, in order to be a blessing to others and to give for the advancement of the gospel. And if you want to enjoy some of your wealth along the way, there's nothing wrong with that either. God has given you all things richly to enjoy. So there's not a lot here that I can relate to, but I can tell you that I am rich in the word. I am rich in the Lord. That is where my treasure is. It's why my name is Bible Treasures and Reviews with Bev, because my treasure is in Jesus Christ. Um, I don't have the financial means to be able to do a lot of things, but my treasure is in the Lord. And you know what? That is fantastic. <laughs> I love the Lord Jesus, and He does provide for us. So I will say this, when you are not financially blessed and you are having to uh, change your lifestyle, your way of living, 
you rely so much more on the Lord, oh my goodness, because this is not by something, the provisions that, well, I have to rely on Him to provide everything through my my husband's employment. And again, uh, please pray for him because right now he cannot go back to work as it is right now. So hopefully when we figure out what's going on, he'll be able to return to work. But his doctors have not released him. We have lots of things going on, lots of lots of tests, lots of tests, and possibly more hospital stay. Okay, so anyway, with this book, this has a prayer for the day. And this says, Lord, I have asked you to bless me financially. So when increased finances begin to come, please help me have the grace both to enjoy them and to use them for the advancement of your kingdom. I don't want to flaunt the money I possess or to frivol... <laughs> I can't talk. Seriously, y'all. I have so much going on in my head. <laughs> um, okay, where did, where did... Okay. Okay, here we go. I don't want to flaunt the money I possess or to frivolously <laughs> spend it. Instead, I want to use it to do something positive and eternal in this life. At the same time, please teach me how to enjoy the financial increase you have blessed me with and to know that it is all right for me to personally derive some benefit from it as well. Help me to truly understand that you give us all things richly to enjoy. I pray this in Jesus' name. So I hope that you take this to heart if you have been blessed in that way with finances. So then he writes a confession for today. It says, I confess that I am blessed of the Lord. My personal finances are growing and I am being positioned to become a source of huge financial blessing to other people. I have worked hard for the blessings that are coming my way and I have every right to enjoy a part of them personally. The Holy Spirit is giving me wisdom to know how to administrate my finances, to whom I shall give funds, as well as how I shall spend and invest my money. I have the mind of Christ to deal appropriately with the financial blessings that God is sending into my life. So you know what? I'm sitting here thinking, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, what if we didn't think of it, about this as financial blessings, but as just the blessings of life? I mean, we can get a word out of that, the blessings of life, the riches that we can find in life. And y'all, I mean, we're sitting here, my doctor or my husband's doctor is sitting here using the terms life and death. You want to tell me that I'm not going to sit here and treasure every single moment that I have while my husband is off work? Absolutely. Absolutely. I am rich in my marriage. I am rich in the relationship that I have with my children. I am rich because of Jesus Christ. I am rich spiritually. And if you are a believer, you are rich spiritually. So I'm counting my blessings. It may not be a financial blessing, but it's the other things that money cannot buy. Money cannot buy. So, there are some questions to consider. It's three of them. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it says questions for you to consider in light of what we learned today. What would you do if a large sum of money was suddenly dropped in your hand today? Number two, are you sowing seed into the gospel that will bring a harvest back into your life? Where are you sowing that seed? Why have you chosen to sow your seed into that particular ministry or organization? And number three, do you enjoy your possessions or do you feel guilty about possessing them? To fully enjoy what God has given you, what changes do you need to make in the way you think about material possessions? Well, right now, I'm not thinking about the material possessions. I'm thinking about the things that money can't buy in my relationships and that money can't buy in my love for my family, for my husband and my children. All right, so what else is in my bag? Well, all right, I'm going to have to put that with this. I'll show you that in a second. All right, this is from the Daily Grace Co. Now, this is something I'll probably do a separate video on as we get closer to the end of the year to do a Bible reading plan. So this is uh, the chronological story of Scripture. This is Volume 1, Eden to Eternity. And... The Daily Grace, oh my goodness, they have such beautiful, beautiful books, The Daily Grace Co. So this is for 
um, reading through the Bible in a year chronologically. Speaking of chronologically, this is a Bible, the Chronological Life Application Study Bible. I did a review of this. I'll put that video link up here. It'll also be linked in the description box. I love this Bible. Now, again, I'm not going to be editing this, so my camera cannot be facing down. I'm just going to show you this as I flip through it. Um, you've got lots of notes, and there's some maps periodically on some of these pages. Um, but they're, the different pictures in here, they're gorgeous. And sorry that I can't do a full overhead. Again, check out my video up here where I am talking about the Chronological Life Application Study Bible. But it has all sorts of different pictures on here. But I just love the charts and the study notes in here. And this is one of my most popular Bible review videos, but it is fantastic. Now, it is a chronological study Bible, so this is not a Bible that you would take to church as your pastor is preaching because the books are not listed in the same order of your average Bible. So well, there is nothing average about a Bible. I'll just say about a traditional Bible that is a little bit more of an appropriate word because, honey, the Word of God is not average. He is a high and mighty God, and so is His Word. Okay, so there's that. All right, what I also like to use, um, I have a friend of mine. She blessed me with this Bible. This, and I have a review for this Bible also. Um, what, let's see, I'm trying to figure out. Okay, it's, it's been several months since I did this one. Sorry, my train of thought is kind of slipping. All right, I will show you up here the link to this particular Bible review. This is a fantastic Bible. I absolutely love it. But when I open it up, you're going to go, well, what's the big deal with that? Because look, there's no study notes. But guess what? It is a filament-enabled Bible. Y'all, please go check this out. And then please go down to the description box and get a copy of this Bible. Um, like I said, y'all, when you buy through my links, it helps me to be able to get things um, to study with and to show you guys as well. Because there are things um, I've been able to uh, to use as I am digging diaper. diaper. Do you hear that? digging deeper <laughs> into the Word. I'm going to look at this video in a couple weeks and think, oh my word, that is what I get for not editing a video. But y'all, this just has to be raw because of the season that I'm in right now. Okay, so Bible recap. I love this. This is, well, it's a recap of your daily Bible reading. And I will come through here. I'll just kind of, I'll, I'll read you a section of it or show it to you. So do you see here where it says day 48? The thing I love about this, it is not dated like, you know, October 20th. This is what you're supposed to read. And then it's still September the, the 15th and you haven't gotten there yet. So this is just listed by like day four. So um, let me go through here and just kind of show you all right, this would be a lot of reading. So what I'm going to do, this is in the New Testament, which would be day 276. I just want to show you what it looks like. I'll end up doing a review on this book, but I haven't done one yet. But so we've got Matthew 2, and this is what the scripture is about. And then it prays, I mean, excuse me. And then she has what is called, what is called today's God shot. I will read that, though, just to kind of give you an idea of what that is. So God goes to great lengths in order to provide for and protect his people according to his plan. He sends dreams and angels and angels in dreams, and not, not just to Joseph and his family, but to the wise men too. We are already seeing how Jesus is the king of people from among every nation. These wise men come from a foreign country to worship him. These non-Jews follow a star and travel for months to give expensive gifts to a toddler because they believe God's word. Jesus is already drawing people from among every nation, and he's still in diapers. Okay, that is too funny because, you know, I just said the word diaper a minute ago <laughs> when I meant to say the word dive deeper. Um, okay, then God protects the wise men on their home, and God protects Joseph's family when Herod turns to murder. Does God's perspective... Sorry, I'm 
tripping up over my words. Does God's protective nature mean bad things won't ever happen to his kids? No. In fact, he spared the life of his son at age two, but 31 years later, things go quite differently. God's protective nature means that whatever comes our way, he can be trusted. That's going to make me cry. He's attentive. He is at work. He is at work on our behalf in all things. And he's where the joy is. So just with everything going on with my husband, that just kind of gets to me. Because he can be trusted. Even when I doubt. Just pray. Okay, so anyway, sorry about that. I told myself I would not cry. Um, but also, I went to thebiblerecap.com and I printed out uh, the daily plan that can go with this particular book so that you can keep a check of what you're reading. And again, I will, I will do a review on this and a, an entire video on preparing to read your Bible through the year as the new year comes about. All right, and then... Um, this is a book by Tony Evans. So I got this book. Um, I did a small donation earlier in the year, and this came with it. So it's 30 Days to Overcoming Emotional Strongholds by Pastor Tony Evans. I really do enjoy his preaching. And um, I always have, this is, was not in my basket today, but I always have this nearby. This is my Life Application Study Bible. I absolutely love it and the application notes at the bottom. But this if you are looking for a Christmas present, y'all, check out my description box below where I have this listed. Can you see that? I mean, it's it's woven, and it's got these two handles on it, and it is so thick. But this is heavy duty. I really have enjoyed this particular this particular one. So I don't have a measure. Uh, uh, I don't have a measuring tape, but you can see. I mean, this is about as wide as as my um shoulders here but anyway I, I take this and I carry it around I mean y'all these books are heavy but I can take this and from from room to room wherever it is wherever I'm doing my study and I can just tote this along wherever I want so you see all these books that I put in here now my, my friend made me um, a uh, a little zipper bag. That's where I keep all my pens and things is. That's where I keep all my pens and things. Um, so that's where my pens are at. So anyway, what is this that I have? Huh. Okay. I stuck this in here a while back. Isn't this interesting? Because of what I'm going through right now. Starting today, Anytime you feel worry or anxiety creeping into your heart, take it as your cue to turn your attention to God. Pray, trust Him, be grateful, and watch His peace, a peace you cannot even begin to explain. Swell in your experience. Then your feet will be fitted with the shalom, peace of God. Page 112, Armor of God by Priscilla Shirer. 2 Thessalonians 3.16, HCSB. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with all of you. Well, that's interesting. I needed to hear that today. So maybe this YouTube video was for me again, just like the video about worry that I taught on. God has an awesome way of speaking to us and letting the Holy Spirit move. So guys, I hope that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday tomorrow and get into the Word, give your thanks to the Lord, and be blessed. So stay tuned. I will hopefully in the next few weeks, maybe I can get in here and focus a little bit more on Sermon on the Mount. I don't know because there may be something major coming along that we have to do. So um, anyway, just Pray for healing and pray for me. Thanks so much, guys. I'm blessed that you're part of my family. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, would you go ahead and do that and tap the bell button so that you'll be notified of future uploads. Again, this one's not edited. This one was raw. But I'll see you soon, guys. I love you. See you soon.
，拜拜，瑶。